Hey guys, Simcolor here and today we are going to continue on our Airbnb series. We are going to uh, learn how we can make reservations. Uh, we are going to just take care of the back end. Uh, we are going to do some front end, but just a, a tiny bit. Uh, so we are going to, to focus on the, the back end and we are going to learn how we can uh, connect or link um, models with each other because obviously a post has uh, the reservations for that post and the user has the reservations that the user made and so you are going to learn how we can connect all of them uh, and uh, how to make it easy to access data in the future so let's jump right into it before carrying on with the video, I just want to let you know that only 20% of you are subscribed to the channel. So if you are enjoying this series and want to see more of it, then please do leave a subscribe down below. It will help you to not miss a single video in the future. Okay, let's jump right into it. And the first thing that you have to do is make sure that the Docker is running without uh, any errors. And it is, as you can see. So remember, it is sudo docker uh, iPhone compose up uh, uh, iPhone iPhone build. And that will uh, make sure that your docker will run okay so now jumping into the code this is where we left off in the previous lesson and as i've said we are not going to deal a lot with backend however i want to um, display show the user how much he, the user is paying uh, in total and per night uh, per night i believe we are already showing uh, let me come in here I'm going to list and the price is zero per night so I'm going to create another post with uh, <laughs> a price that's higher than zero let's make it 10 so that it is a round number open that up submit wait a second yep it went through so go to list okay so we have ten dollars per night in this case but we want to show the user the total amount uh, of money that the user will have to pay by choosing x amount of days or nights better yet that's actually really important so yeah that's what we are going to do uh, right now and it, it will be really simple don't worry about that at all the first thing that we'll need to do is to uh, get the date um, from the calendar and as you can see, we don't aren't getting any uh, thing, um, so we aren't recording uh, the changes within the calendar, and we are going to use this on change in order to to do that. So let's come up here and say on change equals to. Let me just check. Yeah, it is date. Open curly brackets and say this dot set state date and uh, this date will well obviously uh, and this is meant to be within curly brackets this this date will be uh, an array of two uh, elements uh, the starting date and the ending date so we'll have to take care of that uh, in the future and keep that in mind okay so yeah that should be uh, all done i'm going to actually come in here just to show you guys console log date come in here and uh, boom uh, we have an array of two positions starting in the 21st of may and ending in the 29th of may okay so we already have the date that's a good start uh, now we want to calculate the total cost of these uh, these users' uh, choice. So uh, for that we are simply going to multiply the number of days for the number for the total cost per night. Okay, so let's say in here we need the dates obviously as well, not just the, the info. And we are going to create a couple of variables, which will be the total nights, because remember the price is uh, paid per uh, per night and not per day. That's how most hotels work. So I'm going to assume that with Airbnb, it is going to be the same. And to total cost will be zero. Okay. So if dates different from no, then 
the total nights and we must check if it is different from null because if the user hasn't picked any uh, dates then it will be null and that can throw an error so we are uh, better off avoiding that uh, the total nights then will be uh, math.rounds now do math.abs which stands for absolute and we are going to say date 0 minus date 1. This will give us a difference between the two timestamps uh, but the difference between two timestamps isn't days uh, which is or nights which is what we, we need. Um, and that's because timestamp is uh, a big integer which represents a date but anyone by looking at a timestamp can say which day it is and how many uh, days there are in the case of the subtraction that we are doing it uh, right here. So in order to transform it into uh, an integer number of days, uh, we'll have to divide that number by 24 times 60, which will be hours, times 60 again, which will be seconds, made a mistake there, times a thousand, uh, because timestamps, uh, with timestamps, they normally you have to multiply them by a thousand. I've seen some places where it isn't that way, but in this case it will be. And then we'll subtract subtract one day uh, to the total nights because this uh, calculation will give us the total amount of days, and we want the total amount of nights, which is uh, minus one of the total amount of days. I can show you that in a second, but yeah, that's how it, it works. Then we say total cost equals to, obviously now info price per night uh, times total nights. That's quite simple to, to understand. So yeah. Now uh, we only have to display this information and we are going to come right in here and um, try to, to display it and make, make it, look, uh, make it uh, feel and look as nice as possible. So the press per night will uh, leave it at that. We are going to uh, double that, but instead of an H5, we are going to have a, a P for a paragraph. So yeah, and we are going to say open curly brackets in the beginning just make this a tiny bit bigger and we're going to say total nights times uh, info per night dollars which is what it costs per night equals to total cost total cost not total nights Okay, and that's it. Now, if we come in here, we'll see that uh, by placing like this, it will give us the total price and we can have a dollar sign at the end. So, uh, if you remember, I said that we had to subtract one and that's because in here we have four days. So one, two, three, four, and we have three nights. So one, two, three, that's it. Simple enough, quite easy math in this case. So uh, now we want to, to make a call to uh, the backend uh, and we'll try to create the endpoint in here and then parse it over to the backend. So in, on the reserve button, we'll have an on click, which we'll call, and this uh, on click will call this dot handle reservation. And this is the, um, the function that we'll create in a second. But before that, let's just add um, parentheses and an arrow function. This is because sometimes uh, if you just uh, add this function, and I believe it happens most of the time, uh, it will automatically uh, call on that even though you don't click it. So on the first render, it will call handle reservation. And that's something that you don't want. So by adding an arrow function before that, uh, it won't happen. So now let's just come up here and uh, create the handle reservation function. So the first thing that we will have to do is to bind these, uh, these functions. So come in here, this handle reservation, 
this.handle reservation.binds this. Okay, that's all that we need to do uh, in regards to prep to preparing the, the function. Now, uh, what we are going to do is to grab this ID again. As you can remember, this ID is uh, this part of the URL. So that's how we are going to, to know uh, which ID to make the request to. And then we are going to do if Firebase dot off dot current user equals to no, then we are going to return. This is because this will be an open page and uh, any user will be able to see this. Uh, so I'm just adding this as a fail safe so that no null errors appear. Uh, I made a mistake there, okay. Uh, this will give an error and it is mainly because we don't have Firebase imported. So jump in on top and say import Firebase from Firebase. Easy enough. And jumping down again. Now let's do uh, what we always do. Let's create a token and then make an access call. Um, yeah, I can write that. No worries. So auth dot current user dot get ID token. You're probably more than used to to doing this uh, this call by now. So yeah, feel free to copy it from another file. Uh, then ID token arrow function, and in here. Uh, we'll make the Axios call. So Axios and yeah, we have it uh, here. So I'm going to actually grab it from here so that we don't have to, to type all of that. Uh, it will be a, a post um, request. This is what we know. And how are you going to, to call this uh, reservation creation? So I'm going to simply say reservation uh, slash create. And now let's try to structure out uh, the parameters that we'll need for this. Let me just give it some space, like so. So we'll need uh, the ID, that we know for sure. We'll need the ID of the post, obviously. We'll need the, the ID token, because we'll need to verify the account. We'll need the account itself. So let's say user Firebase dot of dot current user then we'll need the starting date of the reservation and the ending date of re the reservation and to do that we are simply going to say it's date start that will be the name of this um, parameter this dot state dot date zero because remember when we come in here and we uh, choose um, uh, two dates, uh, it will give us an array with two um, two dates. Uh, the starting date is zero and the ending date is one. So date start zero is the date zero and date ends will be the date one. Don't forget the commas there, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so we are then free to just remove these set states console log, console error, and uh, yeah, that's all that we need. We can add the console error here, but it is really uh, not usual for it to, to throw an error. But more is always better than, than less than. Okay, so now we have our uh, request made. However, the backend doesn't have anything to receive it. So let's jump right into the backend and forget about the front end for a second. So let's come in here, source, routes, routes, go to the bottom of the page and uh, feel free to, to grab another request. Now, uh, as, we, as we did just, just now, we are going to grab the API reservation uh, slash create and paste it there. Now we'll have to simply create the, the reservation func 
file and uh, add a function called create, which uh, we'll do uh, right now. So because we know it will be a reservation func, we can go ahead and call it uh, right here, even though it doesn't exist yet. So don't uh, worry if the, your backend crashes, it will restart once everything is correct. And then we'll say const and pass along all of these variables. So the ID, the ID token, the user, the date start and the date ends. So come in here, ID, ID token, user, date starts and date ends equals to rec.query. Okay, and this data will obviously all need to be passed uh, on to, to here and um, that's it so let's just grab this go up top call this function reservation and yeah now let's go ahead and create this function so new file reservation dot js and that's it so now we can actually start to worry about creating this function um, it will be a small function by for now, but yeah, it will get bigger as time progresses and we add more stuff to it. So uh, the first thing that we are going to do is say module.exports open uh, equals open brackets and this will uh, make us the, the place where we can create all of the functions. So the first one that we'll create is obviously uh, the create function which will contain all of the all of these parameters so let's just grab them paste them in there and create uh, an arrow function for a new promise so promise and it will be resolve reject uh, you are you are free to <laughs> to place it inside the the function itself but i prefer to keep it in line this uh, clear, clear, cleans up the code just a tiny bit and uh, everything is easier to read. Then create an arrow, arrow function and that's it. Uh, it will, it is giving an error. Let me just check. Oh, um, the parenthesis has to be uh, in here and not there. Okay, so now uh, we have everything set up and ready to start working on the, the logic behind the reservation. So I'm going to open up the posts, the user, and I'm going to create yet another model, which will be the reservation uh, model itself. Let me just close uh, this. I can close this. Yeah, just make everything uh, look a bit tidier. I'm going to grab the user model just because it has uh, everything uh, set and done. And I'm going to paste it in here and just uh, make it a reservation model. So clear everything that says user. And yeah. Now, what will we need uh, for the reservation model? Uh, we'll need a date start, a date end. And you might think that that's all that we need. However, we need the ID of the, the, the post and we need the ID of the user that made the reservation. That's really important and that's how we are going to connect everything up. So first thing first, we are going to say date start. The type will be uh, date, comma, you can copy that and do the same thing for the date end. And now we'll have the creator. So creator of the reservation, obviously. The type will be of the type mongoose dots schema dot types dot object id and now we pass along the ref uh, the reference of the user which is in this case is user and the reference just for you to 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 know is this name that we give right here so now we have an id for the creator but we also need an id for the post the post for which the reservation was created so the ref uh, again is called post so we can leave it at that and now our reservation is done however in the user and post we must also uh, connect our reservation to there 
And the way we're going to do this is by doing the same thing as we did for the post with the user. So I'm going to actually just grab that co uh, and copy it in here. Say reservations, reservation. This way, the, each user will have um, an array of all of the reservations that the user is, has made. And that way, it is uh, much easier for us to grab all of the information that we need. And then we can just grab it, grab this and paste it inside the post.js, which will contain all of the reservations related to that post. So all of the reservations that were made for that post. Okay. So that's basically it. Uh, but now we have some um, a way of storing this data, which is not uh, really conventional. Uh, and so, I, I mean, we already did it for, with the post, but because we have two arrays, which we need to push to, uh, because remember when the user created a post, we, are, we were pushing the array to the user uh, post attribute in the user schema. But now we need to push to the user and then to the post or to the post and then to the user that really doesn't matter. But for now, let's come in here and say, uh, and we have to verify the account first. So I'm going to import all of the um, files that we'll need for this part. So the first thing that we'll need is the user model. Let's say require point point models user and we can double that and do the same thing for the post and for the reservation itself post model post and finally reservation okay that's it uh, now we'll also need um, one function we, one function file which will be the user in order to verify the account so let's uh, come in here user func uh, let me just check the name oh yeah it is in the same file so uh, just one point and user okay so hopefully it didn't crash on me require I made a typo there okay let's check now yep it didn't crash it just reloaded okay so now let's first of all verify the account like we uh, always do in this type of post actions so verify accounts user ID token and then our user func will take care of the the rest we'll just wait for a promise which in this case uh, will return a result and open that up and there we go okay uh, we'll also have to add the catch in case uh, the verification fails for some reason and we'll have to reject uh, the promise so in this case just simply come in here and say reject new error error not you but yeah new okay so now we are free to start building uh, the objects of the reservation and then storing them that in the um, in, in both the user uh, schema and uh, post schema so let's start by building the the object so m reservation and the m reservation will be a new reservation model which will pass along the post id uh, so post id then we'll have to pass along the creator which will be creator results dot underscore id this result will be returned to us from the verify account we can use that and then the date starts and the date ends remember because we are using curly brackets uh, we don't need to say date start uh, two points date start we can just simply say date start and it will assume uh, the name of the variable or the or the attribute will be date start okay 
So now come in here. Uh, all you have to do in order to start this reservation will be to say um, mreservation.save. And you might say, well, that's it. But no, uh, because uh, by saving, you are just creating uh, that entry in the reservation, dot, uh, the reservation schema. So um, the users won't have any uh, new reservations and the posts won't have any new uh, reservations. So in order to fix that, all we have to do is, as we did for the users and the posts, we will have to push um, these objects into uh, the array of each of those uh, schemas. So user model, first of all, you're going to say find by ID and update, not remove, but find by ID and update. Let's remove this. Okay. And the, the ID of the user will be as we did uh, earlier, which is uh, results dot underscore ID. And then we are simply going to call push two points reservations two points open um, the street I, I forgot I, I forget always how these are, are called <laughs> uh, the straight brackets wherever you you can uh, see the screen and see what they are um, and then pass along as a reservation in within them this will push uh, this object to the end of the array so we'll have and it won't push the whole object obviously it will just push the id uh, the good thing about this is when we want to know uh, the information that a specific user uh, has on the res all of their, their reservations we will then be able to use a function that's called populate in order to just by uh, having the ID in the user model, we'll be able to get all of the information of that reservation and not just the ID, which is really cool. We'll just have to make one call and everything. It, it is like a join uh, if you come from an SQL background. So it will join uh, the reservation and the user um, information. So uh, now we'll need to pass along a couple of parameters. Uh, so the new, and I'll explain that in a second, should be equal to true, and uh, use find and modify, which will set to false. So uh, the new simply says that it will return to us uh, uh, the object updated with all of the information that uh, it got from pushing the reservation and they use find and modify is sim simply something that you sorry about that that you have to add uh, because um, it, it was a function that was deprecated and so you have to add the false otherwise an error will pop up okay so that's uh, easy enough let's say then let's uh, print out the results so that we can see what's happening open curly brackets catch the error again let me grab this we can simply copy and paste that and we are going to console log this information so console log results okay and now we are simply going to grab this and do the same thing for the post model uh, I'm not quite sure if there's a better way of doing this. I tried to search around, but I couldn't find any uh, anyone that had the same problem. So I'm going to do it like this because I know it works. It doesn't look really pretty because we are uh, nesting a lot of uh, promises, but it works and it gets the job done. So only when the post model uh, reaches the end are we going to resolve and we are going to return the reservation. Uh, or we are going to return yeah we can return the reservation so uh, we are rejecting that we are rejecting that okay everything seems uh, fine so yeah uh, the only thing that I'm going to do is actually add uh, a list function uh, for the reservation uh, let me just check if we've done uh, list functions uh, somewhere else uh, we did for the post obviously so yeah I'm going to simply come in here grab the list function and paste it there so list 
reservation model and I'm going to simplify this resolve because it doesn't need all of that okay and I'm going to come into routes and create a, a reservation list so come in here get this is a post not not to get don't forget to change that otherwise it will not find the the, the endpoint say list doesn't need all of this just needs a list this is just so that we can see uh, what's happening and I'm going to do the same thing for the user so that we can see it adding uh, the ID to the reservation array in the the user schema so I'm going to come in up here where the user endpoints are so user user thank and yeah list which will uh, simply again copy the the list that was on post and move it into uh, the user function file so user model let me just check one thing yeah user model and that's it so i'm going to deploy the app and i'm going to use insomnia which is a really cool program that you can download and use freely and I'm going to use these in order to make the queries for the list uh, endpoints so that we can uh, cross-check them and see that everything is going on fine because right now uh, in the front end we, are, we have no way of displaying the information so we are going to use Insomnia for that so I'll be back in a second Three weeks later Okay, so uh, I tested it and obviously I uh, <laughs> made a couple of mistakes, typing errors mostly. Uh, in here it was promised and not wherever it was before. Uh, then in the results uh, it returns uh, result.user and not just result. So we have to place that otherwise it won't work. Uh, okay, that's fine. And now coming into here, I forgot to add the, the second parameter uh, of the access post, which is null. This is used to pass along bodies and other uh, stuff, but we don't need to worry about that at the second. And I forgot the parentheses in the Firebase auth. So yeah, you have to add them, otherwise it won't work. Uh, so coming in here, I'm going to make a reservation from the 26th to the 30th of May. Reserve, uh, the, the request went through. Yeah, nothing crashed. Now coming into Insomnia, I added all of the endpoints in here. Uh, I'm sh I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure how to make the the layers bigger, but try to to look at it uh, and try to actually install it and use it yourself because this is your best friend uh, for backend. So uh, first of all, we have the reservation list uh, which we just uh, sent, and it is from the twenty. Let me just uh, see the 25th so it is uh, doing uh, 20th uh, to the 30th of May, of May. I'm not quite sure why but yeah we'll fix that uh, in a second then we have the users which uh, has the reservation uh, ID of this uh, last reservation so as you can see it is a reservation ending in 622 uh, so if you come in here you have 622 and then in the post uh, we have also the reservations and now going into the post list uh, if we send the request we'll have the the request 622 so yeah that's exactly what we need and uh, yeah um, there's one simple mistake that uh, the date start is uh, beginning uh, one uh, day before um, the, we the day that we actually chose so coming into posts let's check it out and try, try to, to debug it and in here we'll have to set the date to one after and this is because I, I'm really not quite sure why it is doing that but it must be something to do with the on change or whatever uh, actually I'm going to change it uh, there so in here uh, let's simply say date zero dot set date and this will be a this date not just a date zero so the, the this dot state dot date zero dot set date and uh, in here we'll just have to add a day and to do this we simply say this uh, dot state dot date zero dot uh, dot get date plus one this will advance the date uh, for uh, the date that we currently have so coming right in here I'm going to 
she was 27th and to the 30th of May and I'm going to make a reservation it went through and coming in here reservations uh, choosing that date starts uh, 27th to the 30th of May. I'm not sure why this is doing this. It, it might be something to do with the timestamps. We might have to to delete this line. But yeah, for the time being, uh, we'll leave it at that, and we'll check that up uh, in the the next uh, lesson, which will uh, actually try to. Uh, restrict the number of days that the user uh, has to pick so if a day has already been chosen that the user can pick it uh, to to stay uh, in that uh, post and uh, we'll try to validate the data to make sure that the user isn't picking uh, between two dates that have reservations we uh, between them so that's what we'll do in the next lesson for today it is all i hope you guys really tr truly enjoy it uh, enjoyed it and <laughs>